Yesterday, we looked at weekly review and planning sessions. I call them my CEO dates. Today, I thought we'd look at quarterly review and planning sessions. So the way I've set things up in my business is I do a review and planning session every year, every quarter, then every week. I used to do it on a monthly basis, but I found it to be really overwhelming and I'd end up working aimlessly and unsure of where I'm actually going. My work was completely disconnected from the goals I'd set at the beginning of the year. Then I read a book called 12 Week Year by Brian Moran. And I don't remember everything about the book, but my big takeaway was to start thinking of our quarters as many years. What I found really helpful about that is looking at things over 12 weeks with the approach of it being a mini year meant that I started building roadmaps of what I wanted to accomplish and the exact steps I needed to take to get there. And it was a big enough chunk of time that I could accomplish some big goals. For example, this quarter, I really wanted to do Vlogmas. And look, here we are. So I thought I'd walk you through the template that I follow when I'm doing these sessions in the hope that there's something valuable in there for you too. So let's head on over to the computer and I'll walk you through. Okay, so we're now looking at my team meeting database, which is basically where I manage all of my meetings in my business. And I break it down into annual, quarterly, and weekly. Now, if you were with me yesterday for day one of Vlogmas, I gave away this uh, database as a freebie. Um, you can go ahead and access that using the link in the description. Yesterday, the only thing I didn't give you access to was these drop down templates. I've got annual, quarterly, and weekly. You only have access to the weekly one. Today, we're gonna look at quarter, but I'm gonna show you how you can add this into your own database. So we'll do that right at the end. For now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the drop down and I'm going to select quarterly review and planning. And you'll see here it opens up in a side view. I'm just going to open it up in a full page view. And it can sometimes take a couple of minutes to populate because it's a pretty large template. So what I'm going to do is just move me over here so I'm not in the way. You'll see here I usually change this out. So say it's like Q3, I'll put Q3 at the start so I have some uh, knowledge of what quarter we're in. And then I'll put attendees, I would just select myself, any team members, the date I'm doing it. And then status, obviously I'll change this to in progress and complete once it's done. Type will automatically populate as quarterly for me. And then I would just select the year here as well. So to begin, I have a welcome, there's a welcome video before getting started checklist. And then I would type in my three words for the year. And then I've broke it down into sections. So I've got review my quarter, reflect and reset, renew and prep next quarter, personal reflections, additional notes, and then a summary here as well. So if we start with quarterly review, the first thing I'm going to do is look at my annual goals. Now, this is just a template. There's no real data in it, but it's just to give you an idea. I've got an example goal here. And all I've done is I've looked at my annual goal database that I have set up in Notion. It looks like this. And I've just changed the view from table to gallery here. And I've adjusted the properties to show me my progress, the term that I'm working on this, and then my target date. So I can come in here and I can say, okay, where are we at with our annual goals? And I can always come in here. There's some prompts in each of these to ask myself questions. Are we on track? Are we off track? Is there anything I need to change? You'll see here, I've got those questions here as well. So am I on track to completing these annual goals? If not, what's contributing to that? What steps do I need to take? And what resources can I call upon to support me with this? Now in your template, there's no databases. So you'll have to type in your annual goals, but all of these prompts here are included. Then I'll look at my scorecard. So that looks like this. This is just an example here. Basically what I do is I have months down the side here. Then I have this is linked to my annual goals database. So I can come in here and whatever goals I'm working on in certain months, I can click through and I can say, okay, quarter one, we're really focused on this goal. I'm going to select that or I can deselect it. And then I will set the quarter, the year, and then I have my metrics along the side here. And I've got 10 metrics. And what I've done in my own account is I've come in here and I've customized it by changing the label, changing the icon. I'll sometimes change it from a number. So here we've got it as a number. But if I hit edit property over here, I can change the format. So 
Say I'm working with a percentage, maybe I want to track conversion rate, I'll change it to percentage. If I'm tracking sales, I'll change it to US dollars. And so there's a lot of options in there. And what's great about that is that I can then, if I close this out, I can then come over and at the bottom here, I can see the average or I can click and change it to the sum. So I can see my progress over a period of time. And then I've created a different view of this here, a quarterly comparison view. And what that does is if I come over here again, is I've just grouped that by quarter and I can also filter it by year just by typing in year so I could change that out to only show me 2022 and then what that will do is it will just show me how did we compare this year quarter on quarter so I find that to be really helpful we'll close that and then I will look at three areas of what went well what didn't go well and then what went off course so if we start with what went well I will start with my peaks. This is my accomplishments database. If you watched yesterday's videos, you've seen this before. I'll look at what accomplishments I've had over the last quarter. Then I'll look at my completed quarterly targets. So I've got all of my quarterly targets in here. I have prompts as well set up for each of them. So I would come in here and I would fill out the results part of this based on the targets that are complete. Then I'll look at my completed projects here. So I've just got an example of Vlogmas in here. It's filtered to only show me the projects that are complete. So then I can see that. And then I can look at my resolved issues. So I have an issues database. And I filter that by the type of issue. It can either be weekly, quarterly, or annual. I think there's month in there as well. So I can see just the issues that I've resolved this quarter. And then I have some reflections. So what did I accomplish and what am I most proud of? What brought me the most joy? What did I learn? And what do I want to continue to do more of next quarter? Then I go into what didn't go well. So I'll look up my pits or my disappointments and I'll be like, okay, this wasn't so good. And I can click in and I can always write some details. Why do I think this was? What lessons can I take forward? And what adjustments and improvements can I make? And then here I have those similar reflections. Then what went off course? This is where I compare your plans for the quarter and how it actually played out. And the goal is to just see all of the different insights, trends and patterns that we can use to make sure that next quarter we stay on course. So I'll look at my incomplete quarterly targets. Again, there's a filter just to show me what was off track or I didn't complete. And the same with projects, I can see all of my incomplete projects here. And then I can ask myself questions. What am I ready to let go and move on from? What do I want to reprioritize and add as a priority next quarter? Are there any patterns or habits that contributed to me being off track that I'd like to improve on? And then what steps and habits can I incorporate to stay on track with my annual goals? Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes I really put off filling in that stuff. It's only because I've started making it a non-negotiable and added it into a template that I actually take the time to do it. And I can tell you it's been really helpful for me. So once I've reviewed the quarter, I'll just check that off and I can move on to step two, which is reflect and reset. So I mentioned my issues list. I have that in here as well. And so it's just going to show me all of my unresolved issues. But instead of looking at what we did or didn't resolve, this is a space where I actually spend time solving any remaining issues. So I don't want to take them into the next quarter with me. So I'll spend some time looking through them. I'll look at what these are, how I can resolve them, what my blind spots are and how I can close that gap so that I'm not falling into the same trap over and over again. And then what key action steps do I need to take in order to move forward and avoid these issues in the future? Then I have a skill building section. So I'll look at the courses, my bookshelf, and then I'll also look at any notes or insights I've made. And then I will fill in the skills I've learned over the last three months. I'd like to learn or improve on the next three months and what resources I need to make that happen. Now, before I used to let this go, I was either super into personal development and I would be reading all the time and doing all the stuff or I would not be doing it at all. And it's only since I've started making it a whole department in my business and I've started to think of these things, even down to exercise and habits as part of my calendar, because if I'm not good, 
my business can't run. Since I've started scheduling all that in as a time block where it has to get done, I'm a lot better about it. I'm not great. I don't want to get on here and act like I've got it down because I haven't read a book in three months. But I'm better than I was when I didn't do it. So I'll do that. I'll check this off. And then I will go into my digital detox, which is basically just a bunch of checklists of stuff that I would completely forget to do if it wasn't written down for me. Things like update my email signature, update my bio if I need to do that, or pictures. I've got uh, inbox zero because I'm one of those freaks that need it to be inbox zero because it makes me calm. I have my tech stack, which I'll review, make sure I'm only working with tools I need. I'll go through my downloads and resources so they're not cluttering up and it's just things like that. Back up your phone, all that good stuff. So I check that off and then I can move on to step three, which is renewing and prepping for the next quarter. Now I do have my annual goals in here again. The reason that I have them in two places is because I want to see them in the place where I'm setting targets or I'm reviewing things. So I don't mind pulling in that data in two places in the same template if it saves me scrolling all the way up here and then having to come back down again. I have them where I need to see them. So I have my annual goals and then I will set my quarterly targets based on my annual goals and based on everything I've just learned about the last quarter. I'll set my new targets. They'll change. I'll just go to new. I'll give my target a name. I'll assign it to myself. I can see if it's off track or on track. Now here, there won't be anything assigned because we haven't started it. But every week I come in and I say, is it on track or is it off track? So in the beginning, I just start with on track. I will assign it to the quarter and then the year. And like I said, I have prompts with everything. So I won't just set the target. I'll come in here. I'll select my prompt template and then I'll also fill in all of these details so that I have a clear understanding of exactly what I need to accomplish the next quarter. Then I'll look at my different projects and priorities so I can add all of my projects in. I can look at my calendar and then here I have an overview of all my projects and these are just different views. So all I've done is change the layout, change the properties and added filters. And then I will write down my key priorities and I usually write these down every single day in a written journal notepad thing just so that they're always top of mind for me. Then I'll look at my action steps and any tasks I need to add will go into my action task database. And then I have this notion strategy and systems update. So before when I used to do my quarterly review and planning sessions and any time before this quarter, this is a change I've just made. I used to include things like every department. So I would have in the review and in the renew section, to go through all of the sales and revenue stuff, all of the marketing stuff, all of the operations. And I found it a little bit overwhelming. So now what I do is I just say review and update business departments. And then I will go into each of these pages where I have dashboards set up and I'll just look through everything rather than making it a whole, you have to go re-strategize this whole section or you have to go into a lot of detail. Usually it's just an overview. I'm working in these pages every single day. So I don't need to be constantly having to redo everything every quarter. It's more a case of just reviewing it and update what needs to be updated. Same with my goals. It's just a case of reviewing and updating. Same with my projects, all of my operational databases. So my SOPs and my tech stack and then my personal development databases here as well. And again, there's no information in here. I know it would be so much more helpful to show you it all completed, but there's just too much personal information. And I love you, but we're not that close. We're not that close yet. And then I have a button here that says add new item. So if there's anything else I need to review, I'll just click on it and I'll update that there. And that's how I go through it. And then finally, I will do some quarterly reflection. So I'll look at my personal development again, just see how I performed over the quarter and do my growth reflections. So what did I enjoy, learn, what improvements I want to make. And I have some prompts up here as well. So I can do a little bit of personal reflection before I add any additional notes and complete my quarterly summary. This is just how I review my quarter. How you do it might be completely different. I hope you could take something from it. The final thing I want to show you is how you can add the template that I'm sharing with you today to your CEO team meeting template that I shared yesterday. 
So you'll see here, I'm now in my template account and this is what I shared with you yesterday. If we click the drop down, there is only a weekly meeting in here and I have added the quarterly review and planning meeting that we just looked at right over here. If we click on this, you'll see it's very similar. I've just got spaces for you to add your databases in. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna click this drop down next to new. I'm gonna add a new template. I'm gonna call this one quarterly meeting. I'm gonna open this up. I'm gonna change the type to quarterly. And then what I'm going to do is I'll change it to full width. I'm gonna come back to my quarterly review and planning and I'm just gonna copy everything. So I'm just dragging my mouse over all of it. I'm gonna copy it, come back in here, come back to my drop down, click on this three dots, click edit, open this up and I'm gonna paste it. I'll then give it a little icon. So I'll change this to another meeting template or maybe calendar. Yeah, let's do this one. And then if I come back out now, and I come back out here, you'll see I now have the option to add a quarterly meeting. And one thing I didn't show you that is really helpful is you can now set these to repeat. So if I hit edit template, I can do repeat. And you see here, you can set it. Now there isn't an option for quarter, but there is an option for every week. And so that weekly CEO meeting that I shared with you yesterday, you could set this to every week and you can set that up so that you don't even have to remember to come in here and add it. You just have to remember to do it. I hope taking a peek over my shoulder was helpful for you. I'd love to know how you set things up. I'm sharing my systems this month, but I want to hear from you too. Do you do things on a quarterly basis or maybe you do monthly? Let me know in the comment section. So we've looked a week, we've looked a quarter. Tomorrow I share my annual review and planning session. So if you want to stick around for that, make sure you're subscribed. Click the little bell icon so you can be notified when I release that video. Thank you so much for being here and I'll see you again real soon.